Hi, everyone. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Sasa Trust US Program informational webinar. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday evening. I'm just going to wait for a few people to arrive. Oh, wow. So many of you already. Fantastic. Fantastic. Amazing. Let's just wait for more people to join. I hope everyone has had a lovely day today. I hope you're all excited to learn some more about who we are at the Sutton Trust Programme and what the Sutton Trust Programme involves. Give people a few more minutes. Okay, so I think we have a few people in, so we are going to um, start. Um, first of all, hello and welcome to the uh, Sutton Trust US Program informational um, webinar. My name is Ellis. I am a program assistant here on the Sutton Trust US Program, um, and I'm very excited to be speaking to you all tonight um, to give you a little overview of what the Sutton Trust US Program is all about. Before we kind of get into it, just some housekeeping before we start. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so if there's any information you kind of miss or um, anything you need to kind of revisit or want to kind of refocus on, you will be able to catch up on this and we will email this to you. Um, we're going to be presenting for around 40 minutes um, and you will have time at the end uh, to ask your questions and for us to take your questions. So um, please do get ready to think of some questions that you can post in the Q&A box towards the end of the um, presentation. Um, we can then go through and look at those questions. Do not worry, they're all anonymized. Um, so don't worry about um, uh, asking, uh, feeling uncomfortable if you, if you might not want your name um, uh, attached to them, your name won't come up. Um, so um, yeah, please do think of your questions ready for the Q&A session at the end. We're also going to be joined by a program alumni, um, a Sutton Trust US uh, program student from a previous year, um, who will also be on hand to share, share a bit about their experience and also um, answer some, some of your questions uh, as well, um, seeing as they experienced it firsthand. But if we start with um, the first slide. So what is the Sutton Trust um, US program? Um, so if you do end up applying to the program, um, along with Erin, who is also here tonight on, on the webinar, um, I and uh, other team members of, of the Sutton Trust US program team will be reading your application um, come the closing day, and we really can't wait to read them. So it's one of our favorite times of the year, being able to read um, all of your um, applications. So thank you so much for joining. We're super look looking forward to to seeing how you kind of put some some of these tips and and sort of like uh, information into into practice, the Southern Trust US program started um, ten years ago, over ten years ago now, to address the low representation of low income students going to the US for um, university. Um, so we, um, myself and Erin, work for the US UK Fulbright Commission. Um, and we delivered this program in partnership with the Sutton Trust Social Mobility Charity. So using the um, expertise uh, of the Sutton Trust um, on social mobility and combining that with Fulbright's um, knowledge of the US higher education system, um, we've been able to achieve uh, delivery of this program for nearly 12 years now. Um, so I think that that's that's pretty impressive. Um, and as you can see here, we've sent nearly 600 students um, over to US universities through the Southern Trust US program, of which um, they have received 
nearly uh, over $155 million um, of financial aid um, being given to them. And 80% of our students are the first in their family to attend um, university. Um, and our students have been able to go to 75 different colleges over in the States, which is um, very, very uh, incredible to, to see and to kind of um, reflect on. So I know that you um, heard me talk about the US-UK Fulbright Commission um, and might be wondering what that is. Um, so, as I said, um, we uh, work on the Sutton Trust US program, but we are employees of the US-UK Fulbright Commission. Um, and you may have heard of the Fulbright Awards. And the Global Award program was created in 1946 in the aftermath of World War II through um, Senator J. William Fulbright um, and signing a treaty in 1948 to create a sort of special educational relationship between the US and the UK governments, um, specifically to create the Fulbright Commission. Um, and foster that kind of cross-cultural, cross, -cultural, cross um, sort of transatlantic um, educational exchange between um, the two countries. And since 1948, thousands and thousands of Americans and Brits have um, benefited from the opportunity to study in each other's countries. Um, and that experience has impacted their work and their careers in the long run after, after returning home. Um, and today, the Fulbright Commission is the only exchange program offering scholarships for students and scholars both both ways across the Atlantic um, and the Fulbright Awards span every sort of um, di discipline. Um, we've just celebrated 75 years of um, being this kind of Fulbright Commission um, an entity and celebrating that cross-cultural um, cross educational kind of partnership. So a key question that you might also be thinking is why would you want to study in the US and what makes it so different from studying um, in the UK? And studying in the US might not be for everyone, but it is a good fit for some students. Um, in fact, 11,000 people um, every year uh, from the UK go over to the US um, to study um, in, some, in some kind of form, whether that's a study abroad year or for their entire um, un undergraduate degree. I just want to let you know some of the reasons why U.S. study can be a great fit um, for students. So we, you might know in, in the UK that there's around kind of 150, 160 um, universities dotted about um, the United Kingdom. But if you were to think about how many are in the U.S., it might surprise you to know that there are over 4,000 universities in the U.S., um, and many students cite the quality and reputation of U.S. universities as a top benefit to studying um, in the U.S. But it's important to know, I think, when you're thinking about studying in the U.S., that taking rankings, kind of placements of, uh, of universities, those should be taken with a grain of salt. Um, but if you look at world ranking lists, you know, various U U.S. universities always seem to kind of dominate the top the top kind of rankings of those world world lists. Um, students can also choose from the wide range um, of universities and courses on, on offer. Um, you know, with and because there are so many things on offer for you, there's there's surely something that's going to be um, a, a kind of a, a right fit for you. So the abundance of universities in America is the first thing. Secondly, the flexibility of a U.S. degree compared to a U.K. degree. Most U U.S. universities, not all, but most will follow what's called a liberal arts curriculum. Um, some universities place more emphasis on this than, than others, and some are more kind of strict than kind of what we see here, here in the U.K. Um, the term liberal arts encapsulates several different ideas. First, the idea is that in order to graduate with a US degree from a US university, you will need to take classes at some point during your academic tenure outside of your main area of study. So here in the UK, we say, okay, I'm going to go and study chemistry. I'm going to go and study drama. I'm going to go and study French. And you go to a university to do that course and you do that course for three years. At a US university, you will do a four-year degree um, and you will follow what's called um, 
the what I call the two and two. So no matter where you go in the US, you will always do the, your general education for your first two years, which means you can pick any class you want to. So you could do an English class with a drama class, with a, a political science class, with um, an astronomy class, with um, I did a when I did my year abroad, I did a marine biology class where I just went to the beach and look at crabs, which was amazing. But, you know, I was doing that alongside a history class, an American studies class and a geography class. Once you've done those two years, you will then focus in. You've probably heard the term major from all of the um, uh, TV, TV shows and, and films. Once you hit your third year, um, you will then think, oh, actually, I really like computer science. So I'm going to end up majoring in computer science. You might still take other classes around that. So you might still do some kind of like maths classes um, as well as kind of maybe some international relations classes if, if, you, if you like that as well. Um, but you will then just focus on taking um, computer science classes. So unlike here, here in the UK where you go and choose one thing, a lot of people who study in, in America start switching their idea of like what they actually like. So you may go into college in, in America and think, no, I'm going to major in chemistry. But you end up taking a business class or a politics class. And you think, actually, no, I really like politics. So I'm going to major in that. And fun fact, the average American switches their major 27 times in the first two years of their study. So the flexibility of having um, a U.S., um, of studying in, in the U.S. is endless, pr pretty much. And that's also um, blanket across all um, uh, all universities. So, yes, you know, there are there, there will be some who don't necessarily follow a liberal arts curriculum. But for the majority, for the near 4000 universities in America, no matter what you, university you go to, you will follow that liberal arts style of curriculum and do your two years of general and two years um, of majoring. Secondly, I think um, in kind of difference to, to the UK, you will, you're more likely to spend time in the classroom interacting with your peers and interacting with your professor in, in seminars. Independent research is really kind of emphasized here in the UK, um, but group session and kind of group in, um, information gathering um, at uh, a US university is, is, is weighed kind of much more heavily there. So for some people, if you know that you just want to study chemistry for, for three years, great. The UK is the right fit for you. But if you don't know what you want to study or if you think, actually, no, I want to do this, but I also want to do X, Y and Z, then thinking about the idea of a liberal arts education style in the US could be the right fit for you. The third overall point is the availability of funding in the US. Um, undergraduate scholarships are often often offered to students based on merit, um, extracurricular achievement, uh, financial need, and or personal characteristics such as country of origin, um, gender, or ethnicity. And if you look hard enough and select your universities carefully, you end up having a better chance of receiving funding for your studies. The fourth overall point is, you know, getting to experience a different culture, learning about the U.S. and its, and its melting pot um, of, of culture. The U.S. spans six time zones. It is huge. It will actually take you longer. It will take you double the amount of time to drive from Niagara Falls to Long Island than it will to take you to drive from London to Manchester. Bearing in mind that Niagara Falls to Long Island is staying within the same state of New York. The US as a country is absolutely massive. It spans six time zones and has a great diversity um, in its geography and its cultures. Um, with a US degree, you get a you get a significantly long um, university summer holidays. Um, so that can offer a great opportunity to go and explore the US, you know. The, the the plains of Kansas is going to be very geographically different to the Rocky Mountains of Utah, which is going to be incredibly different from the coast of California, which is going to be incredibly different from the leafy, small kind of towns of Maine and New Hampshire and Rhode Island. Um, so the U.S. has so much on, on offer to see within it within one country. So that for, for someone wanting to, to go and spend four years in a different country, that could also be another kind of pull factor for you. Um, 
living on campus as well um, and the kind of generally open friendly nature of of americans may allow students to kind of further their knowledge to know um u.s culture uh, we have lots of students on our program who strike up friendships with american students on campus who will then go to their you know house for thanksgiving that year um and they'll strike up friends with someone who has a car so is able to go and explore different places around around their city or around their state because they've because you know Americans are so gen in in general they're very friendly and and uh, giving to to people especially if you have a um, a British accent all you need to do is say something in your British accent and everyone will do everything for you in in America and fifth and finally um, internationalizing your and expanding your your CV studying abroad um, and working abroad makes you incredibly more um, em employable. It's shown that you at the age of you know 18 years old have decided, yeah, I'm gonna go and move 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 to another country for, for four years. That takes guts to do. And having that on your CV and be able to say to your, to your prospective employer, hello, I went and did this, um, is, is gonna add a huge kind of skill set to your arsenal. Um, and we know that students want to be more competitive in, uh, in, a, in, in an increasingly global workplace. Um, so the act of going and doing your study abroad year um, will it allow you to kind of gain um, um, transferable um, in, intercultural skills that sets you apart from, from other people um, in the job market. So that's a bit about why studying in, in the US could be um, a right fit for you. So if we think about um, the Southern Trust US program and how this kind of like all lines up and you might not be thinking about, oh, how does, the, how does this program actually take place? Well, first of all, we are so delighted that so many of you are uh, interested um, in the program. And hopefully in this kind of next mini section, um, you'll learn some more about what, about the kind of student that we might be looking for, um, our essential criteria for applicants and any additional criteria that we might be um, uh, in, interested in. So now I'm gonna be telling you um, a little bit more about what we do on the Southern Trust US program. Um, so as you might have seen from, from the website before applying, the Southern Trust US program is designed to help year 12 students um, in England, S5 in Scotland or year 13 in Northern Ireland from state schools across the UK to explore um, US study. And on um, the on the program, it includes um, two UK residentials to uh, meet everyone else who um, is on the program um, and to explore uh, US study, you know, kind of learn, learn in depth the difference between US and UK study and see if it might be the right fit for you. And also from receive comprehensive admissions advice from us. Um, the team on, on the Salesman Trust um, US program. We'll also help you um, with your application materials and actually guiding you through the, the prospective application that you could make to um, a, a US university and what, what comprises that. Um, it's quite different to, to, to UCAS, but do not worry. We as the team have your back and we are there to, to guide you through that, that process that can seem um, can seem. Uh, very, very new. Um, you will also, um, if selected for the program, have a week in going to the US and staying um, on campus at a leading US university, where you will then also go, also go and visit other US um, uh, US camp uh, US university campuses um, around the area where you're going to be staying in, um, which is um, incredible. Um, Importantly, we also give um, guidance for your teachers and your parents or guardians, um, you know, making sure that they are also coming along. Uh, you know, you will be the, the participant in, in the program, but we're certainly not going to leave your teachers um, or your parent or guardian um, in, in the dark about what you're doing and what you're up to and how they can support you through, through, this, through this program. It's also a great chance to meet other UK students who are interested in US study or just, you know, like like minded um, individuals. I've I've been working at this job for nearly three years 
and the amount of friendships I have seen form within groups of students that are accepted onto the program is absolutely amazing. Um, so not only is it a chance for you to expand your own knowledge and potentially discover something new that could be the right fit for you, it's also a great way to make so many new friends. Um, and as you can see from, from the graphic here, there is an optional second year of the program, which will then um, support um, students to apply, actually apply to um, US universities um, alongside your um, UCAS uh, options. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, gosh, two, two, two residentials, a trip to America, like, what do I have to pay? The answer is nothing. All the costs, everything, that's travel to all the residentials, that's staying at the residential, that is food at the residential, that is your flights to America, that's staying on campus at, at America, that is your food at, on campus at, sorry, at your university that you'll be staying at in America is all covered by, by this, um, the Southern Trust US program. So you do not need to worry about covering any of that cost. So now we need to talk about if students are going to be eligible or not. Um, so to be eligible for the, the, the Southern Trust uh, US program, you must currently be in year 12 um, in England and Wales, S5 in Scotland or year 13 in Northern Ireland. If you are in year 11, Fantastic, that's great. Please do wait a year um, if you are in year 13. Um, unfortunately, um, it's only available for students who are in year 12. So unfortunately being in, in year 13 would not make you um, eligible. You um, must attend and have always attended um, a state funded school or college, i.e. Non, a non-fee paying school. Um, this includes people who attend um, uh, a, a fee paying school on a bursary or on a scholarship. Um, the Southern Trust US program is a social mo mobility charity. And we uh, understand that um, fee paying schools might have access to resources about applying to American universities that state schools might not have. Um, so the mission of the Southern Trust uh, US program uh, being funded by the Southern Trust is to offer this opportunity to state school students who might not have the ability to access, access those, those um, resources. Um, importantly, um, you must not hold US citizenship. So if you are a US citizen um, or you hold dual UK US um, citizenship, then unfortunately that, that would not make you um, eligible for our program as well. Um, we also um, ask that you are from a low or middle income family. Generally, this will mean a household earning of £45,000 or, or less for your total household, household income. If your household income is, say, 46000 or 47000 that doesn't make you outright ineligible. Um, we, would, we would still totally welcome your application. It would just then be a case of, uh, of expanding on that um, in in your um, in your actual application to to our, our program, and of course, finally and more importantly, um, you must be interested in U.S. culture and higher education. Um, so I hope that um, the slide we had a couple of slides ago talking about why you might want to study in the U.S. has ignited some some interest or um, or passion for U.S. culture and U.S. Um, U.S. higher higher education. So those are our core requirements um, that will allow you to be um, eligible for, for the program. I want to note that these criteria um, are not core eligibility criteria. You don't need to meet these to be to apply to um, the program. However, we are very interested in students who might also meet these um, extra criteria. And the more, the more you meet, the stronger this will be to kind of help your, your application. Um, so that would include if you're the first in your family to attend um, university, if you've been eligible for free school meals, uh, if you attend a school or college with um, below average A-level or higher point score and or a low rate of progression into higher education. Um, if you have uh, attended schools with a lower than average progression um, 
sorry, a higher than average proportion of students who qualify for free school meals. If you live in a neighborhood with kind of low rates of progression into higher education and or um, a high level of socioeconomic um, deprivation, and if you have excellent GCSEs or S4 qualifications. So that kind of gives you an overview of um, what the Sutton Trust um, US program is, why US study might be right for you, and what we are looking for in terms of um, uh, eligible um, students. Um, I'm now going to pass over to Erin, who's going to talk more about um, uh, the application to the Sutton Trust US program. And of course, if you do have any questions, um, please do uh, save them, jot, jot them down somewhere and get ready to write them in the Q&A section towards the end of the presentation. But for now, I will hand you over to Erin. Great. Um, thank you so much, Alice. Um, so in this next part, I'm going to talk briefly about what the application actually looks like and um, explain some of the common confusion points that students might have about our program application. And um, just on the right, we're looking at a picture of Safa, who is a student at Vanderbilt University uh, and a program alum. So um, the application largely has two components. Uh, this is modeled roughly after the actual university application the students would submit when they apply to a university in the US. So um, the students will fill out their own application forms themselves, and then they will designate a member of staff at their school to fill out a reference form for them. Um, both of these two parts must be completed for us to be able to consider your candidacy for the program, but they do have different deadlines. Um, so for the student one, as a lot of you may know, uh, it's due by midnight on January 14th, 2024. And your teachers have a little bit more of a grace period of three days. So their part of the application is due on the 17th. Um, which this means that you can submit your part of the application once it's ready. You don't have to wait for your teacher sub to submit before you can submit your part. Um, but as I said, uh, both parts must be completed before we consider you uh, for a place on the program. Um, in this next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what the student application looks like, because I know um, some of you might have already started your application, others are probably just here for information and to see what this program is actually about. So when you do start the application, by the way, we're looking at, again, <laughs> a picture of Shane, who um, graduated in 2021 from Bates College in Maine. Um, so it's quite a lengthy application. It's modeled after the actual university application. It asks for a lot more than just your academics. Um, so of course we do ask for your academic achievements, but we're also interested in learning what extracurricular activities that you do um, and to fulfill the social mobility mission that we've mentioned of the program before and to facilitate, if you do get on the program and apply to a U.S. university, to facilitate us um, helping you access the funding that we have briefly discussed. We need to know more about your family and financial situation. And of course, um, this is a U.S.-U.K. cultural exchange program. So of course, we want students to, who are interested in U.S. culture and U.S. studies. Um, there's so that's kind of like the, the profile information that we will ask for. There are also going to be several short essay questions and a video interview. So this, the video interview is not where we, like there's not going to be an actual person on the other side of the interview, is where you record a uh, more or less around five minutes in video of yourself um, following our instructions. So um, the reason why we ask for this much information from you is because the vision of US applications is quite different from like 
say what uh, universities look for in a UPASS application. We want to know uh, more about the students. We want to know whether they're going to be a great addition to the diversity and dialogue that students are going to have as a cohort. We want to know if they're going to have a real chance of thriving on the program, um, that they're going to kind of benefit the most from this opportunity, as well as if they do decide to apply to a U.S. university, um, uh, we can see them potentially uh, succeeding. So that's, that, that's kind of why we ask for um, a well-rounded different aspects of information uh, from students. And then there is also a school reference form, which your teachers would have to complete. So just to clarify, um, this doesn't have to be a member of teaching staff. It can be anyone who currently works at the school that you attend and who knows you best and can to the best of their knowledge, attest to the information that you've provided and provide additional context to your studies, to your how you interact with your peers at school and as well as other information that we look for. So this is, your teachers don't have to say, attach any official additional documents. They just have to choose to the best of their knowledge, um, say what they, they know is true of you. And this is so that we get a little bit more context information about you so that we verify that you actually do meet the program criteria. And also because later down the line, we're going to need your teacher to do quite a bit of work to support your participation of the program and your participation um, should you choose to uh, participate in part two of the program and apply to the U.S. university, that they actually do have capacity and willingness to support you in that journey as well. So that was a very, very quick uh, whistle-stop whistle tour of what the application looks like. Um, I would say um, it is it has a lot of different components, so do start fast. And this is leading us to application tips. So I'm going to talk about from Leica. So Ellis and I and our other members of staff on the team are going to be the actual readers of your application. So we're going to give a few tips from our experience reading hundreds and hundreds of student application for the pro uh, to the program every year. And then we're going to introduce an alum to share her experience and her tips. So from our perspective, because we adopt this philosophy that's called a holistic review of your application, which means uh, we don't take anything in its out of context. We want to know if you achieved an A, did you achieve this A while having loads of other family responsibilities? Do you, did you achieve these results um, while there are relatively limited resources at your school, or even if you didn't achieve um, as, you know, the, the optimized results that you had hoped for, was it because that you were ill at the time when you took these exams, or was it because you had changed teachers five times during, during a year? So this is all crucial information that helps us understand um, how you achieved, what you achieved in the past, as well as in the a year and a half, then we're potentially going to know you, um, the, the type of situation that you're working with. And another small te technical tip is to draft your essays in, in Word first. I can't tell you how many students have started an essay and lost it once you know, they went to get a coffee, they accidentally closed the window and they have to do it all over again. It's just annoying and um, we we wouldn't want you to have to experience that. And then, as I mentioned, uh, there is a video component of the application. Um, we do understand that a lot of times people have um, technical difficulties, people 
uh, don't have access to the necessary equipment. So we do give an option to not submit, submit a video interview. But I would say, if you can borrow somebody else's phone, if you can use Wi-Fi at your school library, if you can use the computer of an adult at your uh, in your family or a teacher, do the interview because this is a great, great opportunity for us to get to know you, um, what how you how you carry yourself um, beyond paper, and this is. As we said, we're not just interested in knowing um, your grades. We're really interested in knowing you as a person and being able to see a face and hear your voice and hear you talk about yourselves and your ambitions through a video really, really helps us um, make an impression of who you are and make an assessment of who you're going to be in our community. And the fourth um, tip is to avoid cliches. This is not to say that you have to invent a brand new topic that nobody has ever discussed before, or you know, you can't say things that are true for you just because you think other people might say it too. This is kind of related to the fifth tip that we give, which is to be yourself. Um, like I said, we read hundreds of student applications every year. And sometimes, you know, people want to, we just can tell whether a student is not being their most genuine selves. Like if you want to say, I've been interested in going to the US since I was five, say that no problem if that is true for you. But equally, then we want to see in the next bit of your essay, you know, if you've if you've been interested since you were five, what have you done since then? Did you want read books, watch documentaries, you know, dress up as a Supreme Court justice one Halloween? We we want to see that this is your true story, uh, not just what you think that we might want to hear. Equally, like you know, if you actually do want to be an airspace engineer and you want to do that because you saw that documentary about NASA and that's that's what's that's what you're excited about say that but don't just say that you want to work for NASA or say SpaceX just because you think it makes you sound cool so I guess that's um and also there's no need to be overly formal. Uh, we're not looking for something like a UCAS statement to be, dear sir or madam, um, I would. you will have my utmost gratitude if you select me for this program. We're very chill people on the program and we just want to know, know you for who you are. And um, this next part, I'm going to introduce Lottie, who is a member of cohort 11. Um, she graduated from high school last year and she is currently a freshman at Kenyon College, uh, which is in the state of Ohio. Um, I'll let Lottie talk a little bit about her time on the program and her application. Hi, everybody. Um, it's so nice that so many of you could be here. I'm so excited that there's so many of you who are interested in the program. Um, I like literally, I think that applying for the Sutton Trust was the best thing that I ever did. Um, I It just has given me so many opportunities that I never would have had like without the Sutton Trust and we really are like a little family so I would absolutely say like if you're even thinking about applying like as cliche as it is this really is a once in a lifetime opportunity like everything that you do throughout the year or two years that you're on the program is just life-changing and you grow so much as a person and you're always supported by you know this team of people who become more like your family at the end and these peers who become more like your family at the end of the whole experience even if you don't end up choosing you know to go to the U.S. like you will be a different person by the time that you finish on the program 
Um, but as for application tips, I mean, I always, I always joke with my program friends that um, I got in on personality um, because my grades were still great, but they weren't like a star, a star, a star, a star. Like I wasn't a perfect student by any means. Um, but what I prioritized the most when I filled out my application, I was literally working from like the day they opened to the day they finished, which you don't need to do. Um, but what I focused the most on was just, I wanted to really get across like me as a person because you know, the program doesn't want to admit, you know, this perfect person who can't do anything wrong and, you know, is just perfect in every single way. They want to admit a real person. They want to admit somebody that's going to get to a US campus and is really going to bring their own sense of personality to it. Because, um, I don't know, everybody's so different and everybody has their own unique strengths. And if you're not 100% amazing at maths or if you, you know, can't, um can't do drama to save your life or if you're terrible at art like it doesn't matter like everybody has their own strengths and we want real people at the universities and everything and the video application I know that it's super scary um I was super scared of it the reason that my application took so long is because I could not for the life of me figure out what I wanted to do I was like I could do a powerpoint with loads of stuff on it I was like I could write a short film like it will be great like it'll be fine um but I ended up just I had this little book and I was just like it was just like a video prompts like I just drew out like what I was saying and I like learned my little script um I just had basically just loads of fun doing it it's just like as much stuff as you can fit about yourself in like five minutes like while talking about your colleges I think just using it as an opportunity to learn about who you are because everything in your application is something that you are gonna do for your real application when you apply to real universities like I interviewed with a, a real university like I had to say a lot about you know I love Kenyan because you know of this 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 and those were all skills that I learned to do this early in the program when I was doing university research for my video interview so just my advice would just be go for it just really make sure that you're putting yourself out there and that you are what's coming through your application the most um but just yeah so that's it for the application but for the actual program sorry I'm trying to talk quickly so that you guys can get through as much as possible and we can get to all of your questions um but for the actual program like I've made so many friends and they've literally changed my life and I love them so much I was talking to them just before I came onto this webinar um I love them um and we've just done like so many things together like the U.S. week is incredible like it's just like when else are you going to get the chance to like stay at a top U.S. university and you know we went to the top of the rock and we saw all of New York City and we got to speak to like real students at like real universities and walk around them and hear okay so this university is really good at doing this but this university gives me more freedom so what do I actually want and just that like being immersed in the whole experience and doing it like an actual American would where you're just like driving around to all of these colleges and you're just like finding out what you like and you know what kind of things are the most important to you it's just like an invaluable experience and I think that you know you would all love it so much if if you were on the program so really just apply please apply we would love to have you <laughs> fantastic oh thank you so much Slotty for for that great speech I I don't think um, you know, it's it's more of we can Elsa and I can, you know, talk until our faces are blue, but it's not as valuable as hearing from an actual alum of the program. And this is just the last little bit of our presentation. Um, this is just other ways. If you're not on the program, if you feel like the program is not for you, if you feel like you're going to go to the UK University in the end, we still have other ways to support you if you're interested in studying or you know, becoming a scholar in the U.S. at any point of your life at all. Um, our program, our the organization's website, I'll put this in the chat, is the fulbright.org.uk. Um, we have full guides, free resources for applying to the U.S. at any stage of your life. 
Uh, we also do, uh, so we're also um, affiliated with the State Department. We're called Education USA, and Education USA has seminars and webinars that helps you learning about uh, US applications. And we also do a USA College Day every year in September, usually. We're um, representatives. Uh, representatives from colleges in the U.S. will fly over to London to talk to students, and these are all free for students to pers participate in. So that is how we can support you on the Fulbright site. Uh, as I said, it's partnership between the Fulbright and the Sun Trust. So um, as some of you might know, uh, there are uh, other Sun Trust opportunities. Usually these uh, the application for these programs open in January 2024. These include UK summer schools where you spend a week with a top UK university or an apprenticeship or pathway summer school where, where you get in-depth knowledge about a, a potential career that you're interested in. That's just a very quick overview of other ways that our, our organizations can help you. And without further ado, uh, we're going to uh, take questions from you. Please type your questions in the Q&A box. There should be in the toolbar at the bottom of your view on Zoom. And um, we to avoid like to protect the anonymity of these questions. We will not uh, put them live on screen. We will just read it from our, our view. So please, please do, please do get your questions into us. Um, let's see. Okay, we have a question here. Do you have to hit all of the eligibility criteria? Erin, do you want to take that one? Sure. So um, all of the mandatory eligibility criteria that we showed on the first slide, you must um, fulfill all of those to, to be able to apply. And um, a a question adjacent to that is that do you need a British passport to go? The answer is no. So the only nationality criterion we have is that you cannot be a U.S. permanent resident or national. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, otherwise what nationality you have as long as you are a, you are a student who's currently studying in the U.K. And if you have a different passport, we will help you with the visa uh, issues with when we go to the US weeks. For the criteria on the second slide, you don't have to uh, fulfill any of those to be able to apply, but it's just, as we said, the more uh, uh, the more of those you hit, the more likely that you're going to get on the program. Fantastic. Thank you, Erin. Um, we've got a question here. Is a recording of this being sent to us? Yes. Um, this will be, this recording of this webinar will be emailed to you um in the next kind of few days to, uh, or the start of next week um there is another question that says is it okay to not know what u.s university we want to go to yet um absolutely um as i said there's four thousand universities out there um and we a huge part of the program is um understanding um and being open-minded to thinking about loads of different um Loads of different colleges. I know that Lottie, um, Lottie shared with me that she had no idea about Kenyon before um, coming onto the program. And then as soon as she found Kenyon, she was like, oh, my gosh, this is exactly the college for me. I love this um, and went for it in terms of applying and was admitted. Um, we also have a question that says... When will the US residential be? So the US, so we're still in the kind of like final prep stages of making sure that everything is locked in place for all the, for all the UK residentials and the US um, residential. So you'll get specific in information about that. If you are selected for the program, we will then give you the dates for it. Um, however, just to reassure everyone, the program um, residentials will never be during school time. Um, they won't ever clash with um, exams. Um, and the US week is is likely to be, um, or more than likely to be, um, during the summer. Um, we have a question here that says, how many extracurriculars did Lottie have? What was your most significant one? Lottie, do you want to come up and answer that one? Hi. 
Um, for extracurriculars, um, I kind of felt just like, cause we had some people come and talk to us about extracurriculars and everybody was like, oh my God, like I started this thing and I was doing this amazing thing. And I was like, so overwhelmed thinking like, oh my God, like I don't do anything as amazing as that, but it's just about everything that you do. Like my extracurriculars were things like I delivered groceries to vulnerable people during the pandemic. And that was something that was really great for me. I helped run a drama club for students who were disadvantaged, probably future Sutton Trust students, like that kind of thing. Um, I created a club at my school. I was on the school newspaper. I was on the student council. It wasn't like a big thing. Like I didn't like win like an Olympic medal, but you know, I did help out my community a lot. So anything that you do, like don't ever feel like your extracurriculars are like not as good as somebody else's just as long as you're doing things and you're doing things that you love and fulfill you like U.S. universities are going to see that yeah I think I think Lottie Lottie makes a great point I think you know it doesn't have to be you know show-stopping variety of extracurriculars as long, as long as they reflect you as a person and we can see that you are talking about them passionately, that's what's going to come across. I remember reading Lottie's application and seeing her extracurricular activities and be like, oh, okay, she she's really interested in everything that she that she has put down here. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Just we've got to, some... sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go Just for it, wanted to piggyback on that. So a lot of one pitfall of potential applicants, uh, what they would do is to list the ones that they think might appear the most impressive or prestigious to us. Um, don't feel like you have to do that. We're more interested in that this is your own initiative, that you're exploring something that you're actually passionate about. So if you haven't been, say, the president of the Model United Nations of all of UK, that's fine. Uh, we're more interested in knowing, like, if you take care of a younger sibling, if, if, if you help around the house, uh, help your parents do chores. That that could be also a way that you spend time outside of class. You know, if you have a part-time job, if you, we know that there are extroverts and in introverts, so you don't have to do these big activities where you have to, you know, speak in front of hundreds of people. You can, you can, you know, you could have helped one person in your life. And, and that is considered a big impact in our eyes. So it's, it's really up to what kind of person you are and then you're actually interested in. Thank you for that, Erin. Um, we've got some questions here about where do we, where do we go for UK residentials? Where do we go for US um, residentials? Again, um, there's a lot of planning that goes into the Southern Trust US program. Um, and um, we, you know, we're starting to plan US weeks now. Um, and it's, you know, it's well before we even thinking about um, going out there. Um, so all information about where we're going to be going for the UK residentials, where, we, where we're going to be going for the US will be will be made available to you if you are selected for, um, for the programme. Um, but we, you know, we're going to be visiting some incredibly prestigious and, and very, very incredible um, uh, top US universities, whether that's whether the, you know small small universities, large universities. Um, the whole point of the US week is to um, uh, kind of like allow you to to discover different types of um, universities. So do so you know do be do be rest assured that there will be a lot of variety coming up um, if you're selected for uh, the program. Um, we also have um, a question about if residentials are mandatory. Yes. Um, one of the eligibility criteria is that is that you are free and available to participate in all UK residentials. Um, there's lots of important information that we give to you at um, residentials, um, so it's it's necessary to and mandatory to attend um, all of them. Um, someone's asked, do you um, do you need to be a hundred percent certain you want to go to a US university? Absolutely not. Um, as I mentioned, there, there's, a, there's an optional second year. So if you get selected for, for the programme and you learn about US study and you think, actually, no, UK study is for me, that is totally fine. You, We're not forcing you. It, you know, this programme is not a commitment for two years that you are going to study at a US um, university. 
if you feel like it um if it's not right for you that's absolutely fine there is no there is no commitment to um to applying um let's see we've got a lot of information about about cost um and yeah how how do you fund um a us um university um so as mentioned there there's a lot of funding available universities um love to have um international students um at their at their campus um and you know for example lottie lottie here here on this webinar she made a successful application to kenyan and they loved her and wanted her um on her campus and so you know we were talking about financial aid and need-based financial aid um Kenyan was able to offer Lottie a financial aid package that allowed her to go and study on, on campus. But there are a multitude of ways to um, fund um, a US um, university degree. As an international student from the UK, those options start to narrow, but all that information will, will be given to you on the program. So it's nothing that you have to think about and worry about now. Um, we know we completely understand that if you were to go online and look at different universities in America and go and look down at the cost of attendance page, we know that those numbers can seem daunting and we know that those numbers can seem absolutely gargantuan. But we because because we we know that they they exist and they they are a thing, we make sure that during the program we let you know the different ways that that your university education in America can um, be funded. Yeah. And just to say, due to the nature of the eligibility criteria, we understand the fan, uh, family financial situations of most students of the who are on the program that we work with. If you remember one of the first slides, we have su supported, um, I think, over 500 British students securing, securing a place at a U.S. college. And we have worked with each and saying, and every one of them to secure a financial aid or a scholarship package that facilitates that, you know, that, that facilitates their attendance at a U.S. college. So funding is a big, big part of what we talk about on the program. And in fact, the reason why we ask for a lot of family financial information in that initial application that you guys are filling out now is so that we have a basis of knowledge even before you're selected for the program to use in the future to give guidance on how you're going to access those fundings. Yeah, thank you, Erin. Um, we've got some questions about um, if you are accepted on, onto the program and you decide to drop out after the first part because you do not want, if you feel like it's not for you, do I have to pay anything back? Absolutely not. This program is free, everything is covered all travel, all residentials, um, all food, accommodation, everything is covered by us here at the Southern Trust um, US program. Um, we've got a question about uh, if you were to do a, a degree apprenticeship or get a fully funded scholarship in the US, is that something the program can support with? Um, so degree apprenticeships are not a, a kind of, a, they're, they're not as they don't, they, they don't really exist um, in, in America as opposed to um, the UK. Um, and scholarships are a it, it are one method of being able to receive funding from um, a US university, which we will um, cover in our um, in our program kind of information that we that we uh, give to students on the program. Um, how significant are GCSE grades to be accepted on, onto the programme? So much like Erin and Lottie have, have talked about, the application to the Southern Trust US programme is kind of similar to an application to a US college and that it is holistic. So you've got your grades. So, you know, here, here in the UK, it's like, OK, here's my grades. Here's my personal statement. Here's my top five. Off I go. In America, you've got your grades. And yes, you know, they are they are a thing. They, they do still want to see good grades, but it's not just about your grades. They will also weigh your extracurricular activities and your thought processes. So like, how does your, how does your brain work? How do, how do you think about questions? Which is why, as Erin mentioned, we will ask essay questions. So, you know, we're kind of weighing all those things equally. Um, 
it's just that the stronger each section is, um, the more competitive um, you are. Um, so, you know, the the general requirement um, on our website is mostly sevens or above at GCSE. But, you know, we, we recognize that it's a, someone who has, say, you know, four nines, um, that three eights and two sixes is still an incredibly competitive applicant with an incredibly set a good set of of, of GCSE results. Um, so try not to worry about about um, the GCSE results too much. On the eligibility check, there is um, uh, a question that will say, "Do you, have you achieved you know these grades? Yes, no, or no, but I I came close." If you feel as though that your grades do come close to our minimum requirements, please do tick that option. Um, and you know that you know that will allow you to proceed in 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 applying to um to our our um program um also sorry if i could just yeah jump go in go for it lottie um, go for it like personally for me um my gcsc grades did not meet mostly sevens um i had some great standout grades which I'm sure helped um but I'm literally in the U.S. right now I'm at the start of my freshman year like I've I was accepted into the program and accepted into a U.S. university and I did not get all nines at GCSE you really as long as your grades are good and as long as your extracurriculars are really good too and as long as you're really trying you know that's all you can really ask for it does happen you don't need to have perfect grades to go because you know I didn't have perfect grades either so yeah and on the flip side of that some people think I have all nines and all eight stars I'm going to be guaranteed a place on the program and in the U.S. university and that is not at all true yeah thank you thank you thank you both for for, for sharing that I think that's really really important um in information um so we also have um a question that says what's the kind of time period between you know now and applying um to a u.s university if i apply to a u.s university can i also apply to a uk university um yes you can we we on on, on the such interest us program will expect you to also go with your UCAS and continue with your UCAS applications as well as applying to a US university if you choose the, you know, if you are feeling that as though the US university path is the right fit for you. Um, again, we've kind of mentioned sort of time frame here. Um, you are currently in year 12 if you if you are applying to, to the program. Um, and then when you kind of have that optional second year, the optional second year will start in year 13. Um, so it will kind of work in tandem with the time scale of your UCAS um, applications. It's just that obviously this this for some this might be such a new a new process and we really want to help you um, through that process, which is why we kind of have this first year being um, with you in in year 12. Um, Aaron, I don't know if you're seeing any other kind of um, questions that you can take. I do, I like, there is one question, what classes is Lottie taking right now? I just want to, <laughs> you know, hear that. Yes, Lottie, that's, you know, that is a great question to, to end on. And also, how are you finding your, I haven't, I haven't seen you in a while, how are you finding your, your freshman year? Um, freshman year is going literally amazing. Um, for classes that I'm taking right now, um, I'm hopefully going to be double majoring in English and classics with a minor in something else. I have no idea what I might be changing my classics major to. We don't know. We're just, we're just going to see where it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm taking English, two classics classes and a film class at the moment. I'm really enjoying them. Um, I've already had so many amazing opportunities. Like I'm literally, I go to university, Kenyon is in Ohio. I love Kenyon. Everyone should apply to Kenyon. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I go to uni in Ohio. I'm currently in 
Buffalo, New York. I'm going to Canada later because, you know, I've made such amazing friends. I've only been there for four months that I get opportunities like this. Um, I'm already the vice president of the freshman class. The president is also international um, and our senator is a student of color. So like all three of us are just like absolutely repping on the student board. Um, I've already gotten into the Kenyan Review, um, which is like a lit literary magazine. Um, and just, yeah, I just feel like there's just so much that's been happening in the first four months and just so much is going on. But this is has literally changed my life and I would not trade my first semester for anything in the world. So yeah, that's that's been my first semester. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. That's so amazing to hear, Lottie. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I think that's a great place to to, to end, on, um, end on today. Um, if you do have um, any other questions at all, um, please do email us um, on suttontrust at fulbright.org.uk. Aaron, if you're able to, you're already there. Thank you so much. Um, and that's one L in Fulbright and .org.uk as the domain. Um, so if you do have um, a question, I'm sorry, I couldn't get around to, to everyone's questions. Um, please do email in and myself or Aaron um, will be happy to, to pick those up. Um, and like we have said, the, this webinar will be, um, emailed out to you as a recording. Um, so do keep your eyes peeled at the start of next week for this. If there's anything that you want to revisit or anything you kind of think, oh, I, I can't, can't remember what they said about this, um, part of the program. Um, you can refer back to that. Um, but I just want to thank you all so much for joining. Um, thank you to Lottie for zooming in all the way from um, uh, uh, New York, is it, that, that you're in right now? New York State? Buffalo, New York right now. Ooh, love. Um, thank you, Lottie, for, for coming and sharing your experience with us. Um, and hopefully we have been able to kind of give you um, some inspiration uh, if you have not started an application yet um, or, um, you know, some inspiration to maybe think, rethink some essay answers or, or do a new video or um, think about what, what extracurricular that you might not have thought was an, was an extracurricular, but means something to you. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for joining um, and we will see you soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.